Hi, folks. Welcome to Crisco's Corner. Welcome back. Let's see what our friends over at the Babylon Bee are doing. There's some really good articles on there. This is the one that caught my eye first, of course. is right on top here. Let's check it out. Senile old man spotted with a gun, spouting wild demands on White House grounds. <laughs> what should I put? Uh, uh, let's do a little laughter on this one. <laughs> or we could use... <laughs> yeah. Uh, let's, let's read on. Washington, D.C. The White House grounds have entered a lockdown following the sighting of a senile old man wandering around waving a gun and making outlandish demands. Look, folks, no more automatic weapons. You hear me? I'm serious. And no more gravel grop, said the old man, confused while pointing his gun at everyone. I travel 1,700 my, miles, million miles, so come on and listen up. Ghost guns are banned. No Congress needed. What is his claim that while the man appeared to be well-dressed, he had no clue who or where he was? He kept asking, where's First Lady Kamala? And asking why nobody's taking him seriously. Said Fred Flanagan, a White House correspondent. He made bizarre claims that he was the President of the United States. 81 people voted for him, and his butt's been wiped. <laughs> that, that's a little cold. The White House was forced to release a statement instructing individuals not to approach the out-of-touch and armed individual. They also recommend just letting the old man continue to make his speech if they were actually addressing the nation his words actually had legal authority. At publishing time, a tactical team was forced to intervene when he made statements calling for tobacco farmers to be immune f for being sued for prostitutes. <laughs> the confused old man was reported to be safely apprehended Enjoying an ice cream cone on the way back to his nursing home. Yeah, that's pretty good. That, that's a, it's a little tough, but that was really good. Let's see what else is going on at the Babylon Bee. Now, this one's a video, so I won't play it. I don't want to get a copyright claim, but it has, uh, because Cracker Jack changed his name to less offensive Caucasian Jack. Well, we all know that Cracker is a... A derogatory term for a white person, at least that's, I've been called, I've been called a cracker a lot in my store when I had it, you know, whatever. You don't have any idea what a cracker really is, but I'm not going to play the video, but I thought you'd get a kick out of that. Here's a, a, new, a breaking story, breaking news. Breaking news, breaking news, breaking news. Pigeon poops on Biden after mistaking him for an old statue. Breaking news. Menlo, uh, Iowa. A local pigeon made a terrible mistake by pooping on the President of the United States today after mistaking him for an old statue. I'm sorry, I meant no respect, said Mr. Flappy, the pigeon responsible for the error. I was just in the air doing my pigeon thing when I saw this old, rickety, ancient-looking statue just standing there with a blank Statue-like expression on his face looked like a perfect target. Several witnesses in the crowd reportedly stifled laughter as the pigeon flew overhead and dropped a massive load of nasty white bird droppings on the president's shoulder. But I didn't notice the bird poop until a few minutes later when he looked over to the teleprompter to receive his next line and noticed the white substance on his suit jacket. Oh, chocolate chip ice cream, my favorite, he said excitedly before Dr. Jill rushed him off stage. At the time of publishing, the Biden administration conducted a retaliatory drone strike on Mr. Flappy's nest. Yeah, I mean, I these guys, the Babylon B boy, they don't they don't hold back. I'll tell you. Here's another great one here. Here's here's a good one. Jimmy Carter arrested for putting Biden. I did that stickers on gas pumps. Now, I'm 65, so I was around for Carter. I was around for the huge inflation of the late 70s, early 80s caused by Carter. And so what he's probably doing is, at least in this farcical skit, is to say this guy is going to be the worst president instead of me, thank God. Let's read on. Former President Jimmy Carter was arrested Monday after a gas station attendant called the police to report a hooligan placing I did that stickers on gas pumps. Authorities arrived at the scene shortly thereafter and took the former president of custody for vandalism, disturbing the peace and resisting arrest. 
The infamous I did that stickers feature an image of President Biden pointing at the total sale of gas, of gas at the pump as if proud of the economic strain he's placing on American families. According to authorities, the stickers have been popping up all over the country and aren't usually traced back to a specific culprit. But in this instance, the stickers were placed comically low to the ground because Jimmy Carter is so short. Carter, who saw an oil crisis during his presidency, reported voiced frustration with the Biden administration when confronted by authorities. He said, every night we had an oil shortage. Maybe I didn't do everything right, but I tried deregulating oil to increase domestic production and free us from the sharp rise in cost due to the Iranian revolution, said Jimmy Carter, fuming. The former peanut farmer, say that three times fast, concluded, but Biden just shut down our oil independence just because he hates Trump. Make us more dependent than ever on foreign oil, which is now exasperated by a supply chain crisis. No one wants to talk about in a Russian war that was only happening because Putin knows how weak Biden is. Sir, you're scaring the children, said Officer Mondale. I like that, Mondale. It's cute. Police then cuffed Carter and set him down an itsy-bitsy chair while they continued to question why he hated the president so much. According to the sources, Carter then shouted, not my president. Not my president. <laughs> he easily wiggled out of his way out of the handcuffs thanks to his small wrist and, and rolled away like a peanut to hide under a car. If you or anyone else has seen a Jimmy Carter, please call the police immediately. That's, uh, that's amazing. Well, here we are. Joe Biden. Everybody that's been employed usually has a performance review. Sometimes it's done yearly, sometimes it's quarterly, sometimes six months, but this is the annual Joe Biden, and he held a annual performance review giving the Americans an 8.5% pay cut. Uh-oh. <coughs> I had to throw that in there, the scream instead of the, the trombone, just to get your attention. As part of the Biden administration's efforts to maintain its perfect record of financial responsibility, Joe Biden sat down with the American people and conducted a performance review in which he gave Americans an 8.5% pay cut. Thanks for meeting me here in wherever we are, Delaware, Kiev. Anyway, I've got some good news and bad news, said by the American people while sucking his thumb. The good news is my sitters say they're going to give me a special vacation in a farm upstate sometimes soon because of my good behavior. The bad news is that the American people have really, really been underperforming. <laughs> Talk about deflection. The president then paused for a moment before removing his shoe and gnawing on it, and he continued, you see, pal, it's everyone's fault, not mine, that the price of gas and ice cream are through the roof. You have really hurt the American people, American people. Biden gave a... Sick, second, I'm not familiar with that word, second explanation of the government's need to tighten its belt due to COVID. Biden gave an explanation of the government's need to tighten its belt due to Americans, Putin, Ukraine, Trump, Elon Musk, Luxembourg, Prussians, El Nino, Garden Gnomes, and Tom Bombadil. What I'm saying, American people, is that due to policies of everyone but me, you're getting an 8.5% pay cut. Until I see you increase taxes, drum up enough printing presses to make more paper monies. It's hard to talk when they have broken English like that. But, you know, it, actually, you know what's funny? A lot of this satire stuff is, frankly, they had to actually put retractions a few times because the satire they had actually came true and they had apologized for it. Now, I was going to go to this one, Are You a Groomer? Nine Things to Look For, but, you know, and the man wears cargo pants causing hundreds of women to stumble into sinful lust. But since I just got my... Community guideline strike take it off today. I think I'll wait a little bit. Oh God. Let's uh let's see here about Twitter. The dumpster fire is saved. Nine positive changes coming to Twitter. Can't wait for this. 
The warning label will be placed on all tweets that aren't based enough. The label will also be placed on memes that are insufficiently dank. You can now choose from one of three avatars, Musk, Doge, and Pepe the Frog. This is all you need. <laughs> all, freaks will tweet, all tweets will freeze at 420 likes and 69 retweets. Nice. Donald Trump will be allowed back in exchange for removing porn terrorists and, gen and genocidal leaders. Seems reasonable. <laughs> That's true, by the way. Porn is still there. Uh, many Iranian organizations, including the head of Iran, I believe, still has a Twitter account. And genocidal leaders are still on there. But Trump got thrown off because he's mean. See the New York Post story about Hunter Biden's laptop is now mandatory. At least once per day, it's only fair. Tweets from AOC will automatically be translated in English. We've been waiting for this feature. <laughs> There's a lot of truth to that, by the way. Uh, you know, after you hear maybe a, a short video of uh, Congressmember Cortez, honestly and truly, and I'm 65, so, you know, we're all losing a little bit upstairs. But I actually feel like I've lost brain cells just listening to her. Oh, God. Jack Dorsey would be required to tweet, censoring conservatives makes me an enemy of freedom a hundred times. Get writing, mister. The Babylon B will be placed in charge of all fact-checking. <laughs> They're the most factual and infallible site in the world. Anyone who doesn't like the changes will be offered a chance to leave and start their own social network. Conservatives are currently practicing their smug faces in the mirror for when they get a chance to say this. And, uh, you know, it is what it is. I just thought I'd get a kick out of some of these things from our friends over the Babylon Bee. They have been thrown off Twitter. Been thrown off of Twitter. Now they can be left back on if they delete the tweet that Twitter didn't like. So admitting that they broke their community guideline specifications slash rules. And that's the way it plays. Uh, you're guilty. And if you don't admit you're guilty, we're going to punish you. So when you admit you're guilty and we weren't at fault, you were, we'll make you not guilty now. And that's the way progressives think. Pretty scary, huh? Until next time, goodbye and good luck. <laughs>